Hello and welcome back to another update as we see a lot of changes across the front line with the Russian forces trying to regain the initiative by conducting some small scale offensive operations and Ukrainian forces continuing their own in hopes of achieving some success and enabling themselves to launch a main push. So the current developments throughout the front line, starting out in the Saporizhia front, we see that the Russian forces launched a counterattack in the direction of Robotine, where they have managed to regain some ground here to the north of Novoprokopivka and south of Robotine. This area here is in the high grounds in this section. If we take a look at the Ukrainian topographic map, we see Robotine here, Novoprokopivka here, and the main line of defense here to the south of Novoprokopivka. If we take a look at the Robotina direction, the forest lines which we were looking at earlier, which is currently in the gray zone and the eastern parts under Ukrainian control, is the indicator as to when the high ground starts. We see an elevation of 150 meters here and 100 meters down there. So with this, we see that the Russian forces are currently fighting to the south of Robotina over the high grounds in this direction. The Ukrainian forces currently hold positions here to the east, which are all located in the low ground. And if we go directly east from Novoprokopivka, we actually see that the Ukrainian forces in the direction of Vebove do not hold any of the high grounds. The Russian forces actually hold them with their trenches. So the trench network here to the west of Vebove is split into two parts, the ones under Ukrainian control and the ones under Russian control. And the ones under Russian control are all located within the high ground here to the southwest of Verbove and to the directly east of Novokopivka. So the Ukrainian forces, although they have gotten a foothold within the trenches west of Verbove, they're still in a position where they have to fight an uphill battle as the Russian forces have the high ground and Ukrainian forces are fighting them in these low ground areas. So if we take a look back at the topographic map we see here straight east of Novokopivka is when the high ground starts and to the southwest of Verbove. The Ukrainian positions are all in the low ground here to the northwest of Verbove. So with this information we see that the only high ground the Ukrainian forces have is in the direction of Robotine and the Russian forces are now contesting that by counterattacking in that direction. The update of the counterattack where the Russian forces managed to recapture some territory was reported by Syriac Maps earlier today. Since then we have gotten reports from Remiland saying that they had managed to launch another counterattack and advanced further. So I'm waiting for another update from Syriac Maps for confirmation to that. But we're seeing that the Russian forces are actually pressuring Robotine in this direction. And this is actually at a very terrible time for the Ukrainians because they're currently preparing for their main push. At the same time, the Russian forces are pressuring them in the direction of Donetsk, as well as in the north in the direction of Kobyansk. So with this, the Russian forces are trying to split up the Ukrainian forces and at the same time launch a counterattack in the direction of Robotine to pressure the current Ukrainian held territories here in the northern parts. So with the currently ongoing situation, we see that the Russian forces are aiming to pressure the Ukrainian forces and delay their offensive as much as possible by putting pressure across the front line and counterattacking in the important areas like Robotine. As I mentioned a month ago before the full Ukrainian capture of Robotine, the Russian forces we're going to try to hold on to Robotine for as long as possible because if the Ukrainian forces manage to fully capture Robotine, then they would be able to launch their main offensive because their flank would be protected. Now with the Russian forces putting pressure on Robotine again, and if they manage to then recapture Robotine, then they would have gotten rid of the defensive flank of the Ukrainian forces and they'll be able to pressure them if they ever launch their main offensive to add direct fire onto their positions and create a scenario for a potential cutoff of Ukrainian forces if they do manage to cross over the main defensive line. And as we have seen, the main defensive line is in a position where the Ukrainian forces have crossed over in the low grounds and the Russian forces still hold on to the high grounds to the south of that. So we see that the Russian forces currently have the advantage in geography and they also have their fortifications prepared to deal with the Ukrainian forces. Now that the Ukrainian forces have crossed over most of the minefields, they're in a position where they can launch their main offensive. So with this, we see that the Ukrainian forces are continuously building up their forces and they're now running low on time. Not just the 
forecast of the weather changing with two days in the next seven days for showing rain. We also see the Russians counterattacking. If they manage to recapture Robotine, they'll be able to threaten the Ukrainian main push. We're also seeing pressure on the northern and eastern parts of the front. So the longer the Ukrainians delay, the more difficult it will be for them to succeed, and it's, the harder it is for them to actually launch their main offensive. The importance of the main offensive is to get some sort of results from this offensive. If they have launched this whole offensive for four months without any results, then the world would see Ukraine as a country that got lucky with their first offensives and that this is the reality of the situations. The Russians are going to be stronger than them and they'll be able to hold them back and the Ukrainians can't win and this will diminish the support for Ukraine in Western countries because if the West does not believe Ukraine can win, then there's not much point in sending weapons to them. At the same time, we see this article by Politico, which has looked at a leaked U.S. strategy on Ukraine. And according to this article, the U.S. government sees the corruption in Ukraine as the real threat. And they want to focus more on that than actually winning the war. And if they do not manage to complete their operations in clearing the corruption in Ukraine, then they could cut the supplies and the weapons based on the cutting of corruption in Ukraine. So essentially, if Ukraine does not cut the corruption, then the support may stop. And if they do, then they will continue the support. This is because the long term goal of the West is to take Ukraine and adapt it into and include it into NATO and the EU. If they have a lot of corruption, then that is not a possibility. This is why they keep delaying the talks about entering. So the main focus now on the Western side is to get rid of the corruption shows that so that they can justify the help towards Ukraine, because currently it doesn't look good for the West to send weapons and support to Ukraine. If they lose half of it due to corruption of different officials, like the defense minister who was recently fired and the deputy defense minister and multiple other defense officials of the Ukrainian country being fired due to corruption. We also seen that the army recruiters of the Ukrainian army have also been fired across the country due to corruption, taking bribes to avoid conscripting specific civilians in Ukraine. So essentially, we're seeing that the West is secretly fighting corruption within Ukraine, because if they do it publicly, then the support would decrease because everyone would see the corruption in Ukraine and then ask the question, why are we sending support to a corrupt country? So we're seeing that this is ongoing while the fighting is ongoing at the front. We're seeing that the support by the United States to Ukraine has significantly decreased, including because of the current debate in Congress about the next budget. The Republicans are saying they want less to no supplies and support to Ukraine in the next budget. They extended the current budget for another 45 days. But during this extension, the Ukrainians are hardly going to receive more weapons and support. It has decreased by about 70% compared to the first half of this year and compared to last year. So we're seeing that the US is sending less to Ukraine and US stood for more than half of the support for Ukraine. Meanwhile, European countries are running out of ammunition. They're running out of tanks. The only thing they have left to send is their F-16s, which will take a year to send. So Ukraine is currently running on what they have with hardly any new things being sent as the budget in the United States is delayed and European countries are running out of functional equipment to send to Ukraine. The Leopard ones, which were supposed to arrive in Ukraine, were sent back due to malfunctions. They didn't have enough spare parts, didn't have proper ammunition. They weren't properly maintained. It was even reported in Danish media that the Danish army had to pull a Leopard one from a museum to train the Ukrainian soldiers in it. And they had to pull Danish soldiers out of retirement to train the Ukrainian soldiers because the current Danish soldiers do not know how to drive a Leopard 1 because it is so old. So 
we have a non-functioning tank that isn't properly maintained with no spare parts with retired soldiers to train Ukrainian soldiers and everything is just not working with these Leopard 1 tanks which they were supposed to send hundreds of but so far zero has arrived because the ones that arrived were sent back due to poor maintenance and no spare parts. So even the Ukrainians could not fix them themselves because they had no parts to actually do it. So all in all the current situation does not look well for the Ukrainians although they are managing to pressure the Russian forces across the front line there's no significant breakthrough they are having a hard time breaking through the Russian defenses the Russian forces still hold the high grounds in the direction of Zaporizhia they're still pressuring and able to have enough room to actually pressure the Ukrainian forces back in the direction of Avdiivka and in the northern parts after destroying the bridges across the Otsuka river line so generally the Ukrainian forces are not in a good position right now and this is the decisive factor the decisive moment in their offensive so this is the worst time to have a bad time so generally the situation is not good for Ukraine the situation is improving for the Russians and that is going to be all for this update thank you all for watching and have a great day